Hello everyone, naturally we did the worst skills on every hero, so it's just a simple follow-up video to the best skills on every hero, and actually I started thinking about it, and this is going to be the significantly harder video as most skills actually synergize well together, hence why the bad video we could actually pluck out a couple of bad skills. But the good skills where the best skill per hero is actually very difficult as I often keep about probably two to three of the same skills on every hero and then have obviously an interchangeable one or two throughout the whole thing. So I'll do my best to explain. I will leave obviously regular attacks in here which is actually why this makes it so difficult. Now let's get to the video and as always like, subscribe, comment down below really helps out and if you really like the channel please support me on Patreon. Link in the description below. Leper. Leper has a lot of very interesting skills. His skill sets out actually are pretty decent overall. The lower accuracy obviously on his main damage abilities does hurt. But one that I almost never go without is Solemnity. This ability is just so good. It's 10 HP, minus 7 stress. It essentially allows the Leper to tank almost everything from obviously damage to stress damage and obviously would be a good combo with Withstand. Therefore I almost never find myself not having this ability on. The skills that do rotate are things such as Hue, Revenge, and Intimidate. Those are all skills I really like, but I always find myself putting on Solemnity. And the reason why I didn't mention Chop, as good as it is, it's obviously his basic attack that wrecks everybody. The critical chance is about average, and the accuracy is obviously below average. It is what he uses to kill everyone, but his actual best skill, in my opinion, is his self-heal and stress reducer. Shield Breaker. Shield Breaker actually has a lot of really good abilities as well, and there's a few that I really struggle with. Though I think I am gonna... It's really tough. There's two abilities, kind of vanilla. It's between Pierce, because it can hit every position, decent accuracy, only 9 is 10% damage, but for that 9% critical modifier and armor piercing, it almost doesn't matter. And then Impale, but the only reason why I'm gonna have to go with Pierce is because it doesn't, it's not as row dependent, it's obviously, Impale's obviously only one on your side. Impale, Pierce moves you forward from one to three, thus she can really help anti-shuffle parties. And it's really the fact she can hit any position rather well, the critical modifier chance as we talked about is very good. And it doesn't matter if they even have a 10 to 15% protection, she's going to work through that. So overall, her basic attack is essentially why the shield breaker is so darn broken. Without that, she'd be really good but Pierce is by far one of the best skills in the game. Hellion. Hellion has a lot of fun skills, and there's probably the the one I would argue I usually actually want to take her on for is Barbaric Yop. Now I understand it's got the minus 20% damage and minus 3 speed, however a double stun in the front row is just too valuable for me. I like Iron Swan, but it's super row dependent. I like Wicked Hack, however it's just a basic attack, it's not all that great. And really any of her other skills are okay. If it bleeds, it's pretty good, but a double stun in the front row for 150% chance, it doesn't need to do damage in my book, 150% chance to double stun with 115 accuracy is pretty darn good. It's great at reducing guards, it's great at obviously having the front row of damage dealers not go for a turn, so that's why I think Barbaric Yop is probably her best ability, and I often keep that on. Crusader. The Crusader has a lot of fun abilities. His stun is decent. And Holy Lance is really good as well, but for skills I essentially never have off, it's honestly between Holy Lance and Inspiring Cry. And I'm going to have to pick Inspiring Cry on the sole fact that it's Torch, Stress Heal, and HP. It can get you off Death's Door, it can reduce a hero's stress, and add Torch. It's honestly one of the best versatile skills in the game, probably. Holy Lance is great. A lot of strong criticals immediately, however, if they have protection, if they're not unholy, it can still do a lot of damage. But it's just not as good as an Inspiring Cry that can keep people from getting afflictions, reduce that stress coming out of dungeons to stop you from getting negative quirks, help save you money on torches, and then obviously it's just enough HP to get off Death's Door. Hands down, probably one of the better skills in the game. It made it into my top 10 best skills, and I still believe that, that this is an ability I always keep on him, because it's also any position on your field. Thus, he can be a 4th or 1st position Crusader and have no issues. Abomination. The Abomination is going to have two for me and two different scenarios. First, we will mention with DLC on, such as Colors of Madness, it's easily Manacles. Manacles with the DLC on can get to absolutely gross limits. I believe if you do Padlock, Transformation, something like that, and his DLC is 180% natural, it can obviously critical. Thus, you go up to 200%. 
Therefore, you can essentially stun lock enemies two rounds in a row if you want, and you can also start stunning people the game designers probably didn't intend on you stunning as well. If we don't have Colors of Madness DLC on, I am going to have to go with Rage. Rage has a pretty good crit modifier of almost 12%. 105 accuracy is to be desired. You definitely want to give him probably just 10 more accuracy, but still not terrible. But he can hit that third position for a 12% critical chance, which is really good. Destroying the third position stress damage dealer as quickly as possible is absolutely treasured and something you should look forward to if you like a Rage Abomination. Flagellant. It's really hard. A lot of his skills are really good, and I wouldn't even say... There's only about a couple of skills I would say are situational, and it would be Endure and Suffer. In those situations, I don't even know what you would say. So therefore, for the most part, I'm transitioning between these five skills all the time. His Sanguinate, I find myself using the least, just on the sole fact. I mean, he has a 110 accuracy. It's pretty good, but on the weird chance you miss and your guy's on death's door, my guys just don't live long enough. Redeem's really good, but is HP dependent as well. Restoration, depends if you like to self-bleed. Therefore, I'm down between Punish and Reign of Sorrows. And I do have to say, having a bleed like play grenades is really good, so I almost always find myself having Reign of Sorrows on. Really chips down the back damage dealers. Has an has a pretty good accuracy at 115. Like I said, does 5 bleed. 67% damage reduction actually isn't that bad. You can still do a good chunk of damage while getting that extra bleed in there. Therefore, Reign of Sorrows is easily my favorite, and I think his best ability on the flagellant. Man at Arms. Man at Arms. Once again, I'm going to... I'm going to have about two different skills depending on DLC. If you have Colors of Madness, we have to go with the Bolster Cheese. Bolster can obviously just get to stupid limits. You can literally break the game if you want to, bring in a couple of Man at Arms, bolster your party up to 100 some odd dodge permanently, and wreck every single situation in the game if you'd like to. Now, obviously, it's only one as it's expensive and you can only hold so many shard dust. However, the possibility is there. Without DLC, it's really tough. There's about two skills I personally think are some of his best. It's obviously a repost. Repost is always good. It's not as great as the Highwaymen's, but it is obviously the other repost in the game, which is very good. And then actually on the weird one, now this is probably only my favorite, is actually Bellow. Like I said, it's a reverse battle ballad, so if you don't want to always bring the Jester, you can add accuracy and speed to your party by simply decreasing the enemies. It affects the whole row. You can use it anywhere. So I definitely go Repose and then into Bello as my best skills. But I know some people aren't a huge fan of Bello because just bring a Jester if you want to get that accuracy and speed reliably. However, the minus 7 speed is actually almost a double battle ballad. Therefore, you almost completely dumpster the enemy speed in one turn. And it really sets you up well for that second round. Bounty Hunter. Bounty Hunter is really tough. There's a lot of skills I love on the Bounty Hunter. I actually usually find myself rotating almost all of his skills, minus Mark for Death, as we talk about. But the other six are pretty fair game. Caltrops is probably my second least used. But between the other five, it's very difficult. My personal favorite has to be Come Hither, though. I think it's just the ultimate Mark Synergy combo. You pull the fourth position. Arbalist, Musketeers, and Houndmasters can just absolutely capitalize. And obviously, he can too with Collect Bounty. Therefore, Come Hither is just a great synergistic, decent accuracy of 110. There's plenty of good trinkets out there that also increase the accuracy, increase pooling, and all that stuff. Marks the target just long enough. You don't need more than probably two or three rounds to destroy them. Therefore, the shorter duration on the mark is not a problem at all. Come Hither also essentially negates Swine Skivers, and we all know Swine Skivers are incredibly painful. Highwayman. Do we need to talk about the Highwayman? We all know it's Duelist Advance. Come on, let's not get ourselves. It's just easily... It is obviously out to two repost, the best repost in the game. It's very good, very strong. Can hit the third position with the ability itself, and then obviously you can kill people in stealth. You can stop status effects, bleeds, stress, whatever have you. You can kill enemies on their turn, thus speeding up your combat capabilities. Repost is just an incredibly broken ability in the game, and the Highwayman obviously uses it to perfection. Occultus. Of course it's weird reconstruction. No, all right, we'll stop with the memes for now for now. However, I always have the heal on. I really do, but I wouldn't say the heal is his best ability. I often have his heal as a second backup, and it's actually I really like Demon Pool, and the reason why I like Demon Pool is minus 50% damage, which actually isn't terrible, but it has that 9% modifier, 110 accuracy, and the two great things about it is it pulls and clears enemy corpses, therefore he's friends with my Hellions, my Lepers, my Crusaders, you know, whoever you want to hit the first two positions. This ability is king and is friend for me, therefore I do think it's actually one of his best abilities. 
for all situations involved. It's great across all dungeons, and you don't really have to depend on huge RNG to have it be incredibly effective. Vestal. This is pretty easy. I put the as, I think, the number one or number two ability in the game. I can't remember, but Divine Comfort. Come on, it's an AoE heal, and you can, you can get this bad boy easily up to about 8 or 9 HP on every person. Therefore, if it critically strikes, you can be between 16 and 18 health. It's really good. It's, a, it's almost mandatory for certain bosses based on the AoE damage they can do or just the amount of damage they can pump out in multiple turns. Therefore, she's easily the best healer, and obviously Divine Comfort is the best healing skill in the game. Not a lot of argument there. It can be used between positions 2 and 4, which allows you to obviously do a Bonk Vestal with still, with still having some decent heals in your party. Houndmaster. Houndmaster is interesting. I like a lot of his skills, but to say one is just ultimately, ultimately better than the others is kind of tough. I have to go a little generic here and actually say it's just Hound's Rush. And the reason why Hound's Rush is so good, it's almost an ability that can attack anywhere on your side and can hit anywhere. And that's truly the big key right there. And then let's just look at Hound's Rush in general, just all the stuff you actually get with it. This is why it's so good. Accuracy 105, if you don't like that, put on an accuracy trinket of like plus 10, plus 15, make it 120. Dodges a 30 or only like 90, 95% snail, pretty darn good. Crit modifier of 9%, pretty darn good. Has a small bleed, which is actually really nice for those protection-based enemies, where if you were to do like 23 out of 25 damage, they then tick out. I've had that happen so many times, you wouldn't even know. And then this is why I love him and the bounty hunter together. 35% damage against beast and 100% damage versus marked. Therefore, as I was saying before, Swine Skivers can literally explode with a dog bone, a mark, and this ability. It's beautiful. You can pop off 55 to 70 is easy. It's a great time. Grave Robber. I, I will admit this right away. I don't use the Grave Robber too much. However, if I do, it's an immediate first turn lunge. I think lunge is easily her best ability. Shadow Fade can enable other things. However, usually Shadow Fade into lunge because you just want to amplify lunge so much. But I'm just one of those guys who like to start off with the lunge immediately because it's so good already. I don't really believe it needs a lot of additional help to get to that disgusting status. It moves you forward too and can only be used in positions 3 and 4. But that's honestly okay because it can hit the third position on the enemy lineup. And just like Rage, this is why I like it. You get to destroy that stress damage dealer almost immediately with that 12% critical chance. A little more if they're blighted. Plus 40% damage to your weapon at an accuracy of 115 if you put on a 5 to 10 accuracy increasing trinket this will probably not miss in most scenarios thus it is easily her best ability and absolutely disgusting when you start popping criticals with it antiquarian the best skill it's kind of tough the the one i yeah the antiquarian is an odd one there's a couple of directions you could go for best skill depending on the play style you like Protect Me definitely has its uses if you love Highwaymen or if you like doing like heavy protection strategies with maybe like a leper. You do like withstand and protect me with a leper. That could be oddly beneficial. Festering Vapors isn't bad. It's pretty weak, but I'm going to have to pick it. And I and I know if you watched my one video where I said top 10 worst skills, I do make a follow-up video where I correct that. The reason why I said it was a, one of the worst skills is because I was comparing it to other blights in the game, and it is actually one of the worst skills when compared to other blights. But when we're talking about Antiquarian and one of her best skills, it's really Festering Vapors, because it can hit anywhere, you can do it anywhere. It's for DOT, which isn't bad, and it has a decent accuracy. I was thinking about Invigorating Vapors, however, pretty much when you start that, you have to keep going, which is why I'm not a huge fan. It doesn't really last long enough to always get that huge dodge boost, but I always find myself with Festering Vapors on, because it really is her only damage potential. Jester. Is it really... Is it really a question? I mean, we all know it's Battle Ballad, right? I mean, 4 speed, 10 accuracy, 6% critical, that's a free, like, 2 trinkets in 1 turn... Adds to his finale damage, so if you do get shuffled, by the end of it, you are going to have a disturbing amount of damage to drop upon your foe. Therefore, it's easily battle battled. You can spam that about two or three turns in a row. You outspeed, you never miss, and you're always critical striking. Thus, you don't even have to take time to do Inspiring Tune, because you're reducing stress via critical strikes. Plague Doctor. So we got Plague Doctor. This is going to be tough once again, because all of her skills are so good. Now, the ones I often cannot find myself going without are the following two. It's Blinding Gas. It's so dang good that it's just, it's a double stun in the back row, 115 accuracy, pretty good. 
Or honestly, I do have to admit, it is plague grenades. Honestly, for damage. It's 6 DOT in the back row, which is, I think, the strongest in the game. Therefore, it's a tough decision, but I do value control a little more than I do straight up plague grenades. And I do feel like blinding gas works in more dungeons than plague grenades does, obviously. Also, once you get the blasphemous vial on the plague doctor, blinding gas just becomes utterly stupid. You can double stun certain enemies in the back row. Therefore, it's kind of like manacles, but you get to do it twice to two enemies. You only get three per fight. However, by the second one, usually the fight's practically over. You're not blinding gas anymore. Therefore, it's easily her best ability, and I always have it on. We meet again, Musketeer and Arbalist. We meet again. This time, it's a little nicer, though. I have a little nicer things to say. So, to be honest, the skills I almost always have on the Musketeer, and then we'll break them down to which one I think is the best, is obviously aim shot. You gotta have, you gotta have damage. Patch up is a decent heal, the healing received, and then skeet shot. But if I actually had to talk about best skill, it's not aim shot to be honest, and patch up's kinda eh. I'm gonna have to say it's skeet shot. It does a lot of stuff in one ability. It obviously de stealths everybody, so if you have someone like a plague doctor with plague grenades, but both enemies are stealth in the back, bam, a little skeet shot. Next thing you know, you can double stun. Very awesome. Add some torch. Once again, saves you money. It's actually, you can't underestimate how much money you can save on occasion throughout the whole course of the game if you're constantly adding 7 to 10 torch here. It clears your stuns, which makes it decent for bosses where have your people go. Clears targets. Once again, certain areas like the wield loves to have people marked for targets, so you can clear that. And then the minus 3 stress, I mean, it's just a nice compliment. It's not really something I bring along solely for. But hey, if you're going to give me a 3 stress while I'm clearing marks or de-stealthing enemies, might as well go for it. Over the course of a dungeon, that can be anywhere between 6 and 12 on a hero, and that might be a difference between a negative quirk proccing and not proccing, so I'll definitely take that. As always, please let me know where I messed up, or what ability you think is actually a lot better. These are personally most of my preferences, but I do find them being probably the skills most people would equip, just based on the versatility, the road positioning, the damage, or the control that they offer. Thank you for watching, like and subscribe down below.